Today, I'm gonna to show you how I like to cook super tender octopus. And we're also gonna try and extract some octopus ink from that octopus and make some pasta with it. But first, we gotta get our hands on an octopus. So we got this beautiful big octopus here that we caught the other day. And we're gonna break it down into a few different components and even try, hopefully, to get the ink out of it. Because Amy would love to make some ink pasta. So let's start by taking the head off. And we can work on that first. I'm not really sure what I'm looking for here, but let's learn together. These two bits here on the side look like the gills to me. Here's what looks like the stomach and it's full of crab shells. And you know the meat is gonna be premium when something's got a diet like that. Here, we got two of the octopus's three hearts. Now, octopus have blue copper-rich blood opposed to our red iron-rich blood. But this copper-rich protein is far better at transporting oxygen around the body in cold and low oxygen environments. They use these two hearts we've just seen to pump the blood through the gills. The other delivers it to the body and the vast amount of brain tissue that's actually spread throughout the octopus. Octopus have one central brain, but they also have tons of neurons spread throughout their arms, meaning that they're semi-autonomous from the head and they also demand tons of oxygen to function. So I'm pretty sure this is the liver of the octopus and it's actually called a hepatocan... Hepatopancreas. It's actually called a hepatopancreas. So it's an organ that simultaneously serves the purpose of the liver and the pancreas, both producing the enzymes to break down food while also processing the nutrients from that food. And stuck to that big lump under some membrane is the ink sac. Now to separate the ink sac whole, you're gonna need some serious knife skills. And I ended up just removing some of that membrane and then just piercing it and squeezing it out. A huge body here. This thing is enormous. I reckon it's probably the biggest octopus I've ever caught and they don't get too much bigger in Sydney, this gloomy octopus. So let's just cut around the beak. If you've never seen that before, it is actually quite a lot like a bird's beak. You can see there, it's like a little pointy bit. And then these two bits just sit together. And then it just goes chomp, chomp. All right, I think we're gonna take a lot of the ends, the thinner bits, and keep them to make a sort of raw octopusy salad, wasabi salad -y thing. Had one at a yakitori place a little while ago and it was unreal. Let's just start taking these legs off. Ready to portion them up. All right, so next part of our prep is gonna be salting all this octopus. We're just gonna bang it into a big bowl together. Oh, that wasn't what I wanted to put in there. That's gonna go in there, that's for something else. We you got all these big chunks we're gonna just pack in here, smash a load of salt on them and then give them a wash. You can see some of the suckers and different things just have junk in them. So we're just gonna bang some salt over the top and we got some fancy pink salt. Let this sit for a little while, and then all this is gonna get vac-packed and frozen. So 
we got this octopus fresh out of the freezer and apparently freezing also helps with the tenderizing so always a good shout let's get it out of the bag and then we'll give it a wipe down with some paper towel just to get any leftover slime off it drill some olive oil over that and i salted it here but in future I probably wouldn't worry about salting it to be honest because it's already been pretty salted when we scrubbed it down a little earlier on. What you can do is add some pepper if you like and we'll definitely crush some garlic and throw that in there as well. Let's give it a little massage and then chuck it in the oven at 160 celsius for an hour. Now for the pasta and Amy absolutely kills it with this stuff. A good rule to work by is one egg per person and 100 grams of flour per person. Mix the eggs into the ink and then measure out your flour. You wanna use a high protein flour like double O or semolina for this. And we'll make a little well, then drop your eggs in there and start mixing that up. Once it's mostly combined and not really wet anymore, chuck it on a clean surface and you can start kneading the dough. After about 10 minutes, you should have a smooth, somewhat elastic ball of dough you can wrap it up and let it sit for at least half an hour. So let's check the octopus. The meat contains lots of moisture and it's shrunk considerably in the oven already, as you can see here. Even with just a butter knife, you can cut it with relative ease, but we've got some more prep to do anyway, so I'll stick it back in the oven for another half an hour. Let's roll the pasta out. There's plenty of good videos on how to do this, and I'm no expert, but basically you just wanna progressively roll the dough thinner and thinner until you reach your desired thickness. From there, you can pick your shape and cut it. Today we're making what I think is kind of like a spaghetti tagliolini pasta, basically just thin flat ribbons. If you've got a better idea about what this should be called, just let me know. We're gonna coat that in a little flour and set it aside. Let's rip through a punnet of tomatoes here and halve them up. Big fat clove of garlic here, we'll smash that and dice it up as well. Now for our octopus, and you can see just how tender it's got. That knife just glides straight through it after that extra half hour. We're gonna be using all of this beautiful juice and gelatin in the bottom of the pan, but we don't want it to solidify, so I'm gonna put it back in the oven once I've turned the oven off. We'll just let that residual heat gently caress it. No, I actually had some garlic butter in the fridge I forgot about, and this was left over from when I sous vide some red rocky fillets. It's got some bold flavors coming out of it, almost like we'd done a stock or something. So I opted to use this instead of the garlic that we prepared before. And if you haven't just been sous vide red rockies and garlic butter, feel free to use the garlic we prepped as planned, and then add some butter in with that. Once that garlic's fragrant, we're going to add the tomatoes in and add a little salt to start them sweating. Don't crank the heat too hard here. We don't want to burn the garlic and make it real bitter. Chuck your pasta in the water, and this is only going to need a couple of minutes. Fresh pasta doesn't need very long to cook at all. Keep stirring those tomatoes, and when they start to blister, let's get that pan with all the juices out. I'm going to add some wine to the pan to deglaze it. And I always like using Chardonnay when I'm cooking seafood. Those bold, buttery, kind of oaky flavors just seem to pair really nicely. And take the pasta out real quick and let's scrape up anything stuck to that pan. And let's add the wine juices to the tomatoes and let that reduce for a few minutes. Once it's thickened back up slightly, throw the octopus in and let that go on a low heat so the octopus can suck up some of those flavors. To plate it all up, we'll put the pasta on the bottom and spoon the octopus mix on top. Little fresh basil torn up and some parmesan to top it all off. 